Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE refrigerator riser cam shim. It's going to be a very easy repair and it should only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new riser cam shim. The riser cam shim is located at the bottom of the door. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's torn or damaged. In order to get to the part, we're going to open up both doors so we can take off the kick plate. To get the kick plate off, it's held in by a clip on each end. If you can't pull it off, you can put a putty knife behind it and just twist it. And that'll get the tab to come out. Once you have one side off, you can just pull the kick plate out a little bit and unlock the other side. Once you have the kick plate out, you can set it aside. Whether you're doing the fresh food side or the freezer side, when you take these parts off, you're going to leave the door unsupported. We're going to support the door, but make sure you take all the food off the door so it's as light as possible and easy to handle. Now that we have the door open, we put some wood blocks underneath it to support it. Whether you're doing the fresh food or the freezer door, the part has changed out the same way. The only difference is on the freezer door, we have to disconnect this water line so we can pull the hinge off of it. So we're going to show you on the freezer side. If you're doing the fresh food side, just skip the step with the water line. We're going to put a towel down to catch any water that might come out when we disconnect the watering union. All you have to do is grab it and disconnect one side towards the hinge. Once you have the union disconnected, we can pull the nut off the water line. So carefully pull it off and we can set it aside. Then we're going to use the quarter inch socket to take off this little clamp that holds the water line onto the frame. Once you have it off, you can slide the clamp and the protective tubing off the water line and set it all aside. Now we're going to use a 5 16 socket with the ratchet to take the bolts out that hold the hinge to the frame. Once you have the bolts off, you can grab the shim that's behind it. You want to make sure you don't lose that, so we can put it back in there when we put it back together. And then we're going to pull down on the hinge and pull it off the water line. Now that we have the hinge off the frame, we can take all this stuff off the door. We're going to use our 5 16 inch socket to take off these bolts that hold on the doorstop, the cam riser, and the riser cam shim. Gotta make sure you hold the door so it doesn't fall off while you're taking the bolts out. The bolt's pretty long, but once you get it unscrewed, you can pull it out. Once you have the second bolt out, you can pull it out and set the bolt and the door closer aside and then make sure you don't lose this shim. And then we can pull the cam riser and the riser cam shim off the water line. Here's the old riser cam shim next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. First, we're going to slide the riser cam shim onto the water hose. We're going to kind of have to put it all together here. And then we're going to put the cam riser on. And then we have to kind of hold it all and put the door stop on. Once you have the door stop on, we can kind of turn it around and put the other shim on and then we can slide it all up the water line and get the first bolt started. Once you have the bolt started, we can grab our 516 socket with the ratchet and tighten it down. Once you have the first one about halfway tightened, we're going to put in the second one and get it started so that we can line up the holes while everything is still loose. Yep. 
Once you have the second one tight, we can go back and finish tightening down the first one. Now that we have everything reinstalled on the door, we can put the hinge back on. All you have to do is grab the water line and put it through the hinge pin and slide the hinge up to the door, putting the hinge pin into the door hole. Once you have it in place, we can take our spacer and one of the bolts and put it through the hinge so it holds the spacer in place while we move the door around so the bolt goes into the hole. If you need to get somebody to help you, you can grab them. Once you have it in place, we can grab our 516 socket with the ratchet and tighten it down. We don't want to tighten the bolt down all the way because we have to slide the spacer and the hinge around so we can put the lower bolt in. So once you have it pretty snug, you can slide the hinge over in the spacer and then get the second bolt started. Once you have it started, we can grab our socket again and tighten them both down. With the hinge remounted, we can reattach the water line. First, we're gonna put the protective cover on it and slide it all the way up. And then we can slide the clamp up and use the quarter inch nut driver to mount it to the frame. With the water line mounted to the frame, we can reconnect it to the union we're gonna slide the nut down so a little bit of the tube comes out and then we can grab the water line and if it unclips from here it's okay we'll just push the union down till it bottoms out then we'll slide the nut up tighten it down so we get a good seal once you have the union tight we can reclip the water line to the little clip under here and then we can put the kick plate back on before we put the kick plate on, we're going to take the wood blocks out from underneath the door. And you can give it a quick swing back and forth to make sure it rides smoothly. Then we can put the kick plate on. To put the kick plate back on, we're going to line this little locking tab up with the catch and snap it into place on each end. Now that we have the kick plate installed, we can close both the doors. Plug the refrigerator back in and make sure it starts to cool. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.